This chicken tractor can withstand anything Mother Nature can throw at it. And here's how we built it. Our first ever meat chickens are going to be delivered in about six weeks, and we have quite a few things that need to get done before they arrive. They need somewhere to live, so today's project is building a chicken tractor. Howdy folks, my name's Reagan. Welcome back to the GWP Homestead. Today, we're going to be building a Suscovich style chicken tractor. Uh, a Suscovich style, this style. It's kind of more, uh, it's got a peak to it or a ridge. You can walk inside it, which seems more appealing to us than the Salatin style, which is a flatter uh, kind. You can't get down into it. I know this isn't going to be super tall. It's probably still going to be shorter than I am, but I can send my wife and my kids in there, which I don't know. Seems again, seems better than the other style. This is going to work for us. I'm really thankful that the price of lumber has come down because we're able to do this. If we tried to do it uh, six months to a year ago, uh, we really would have broken the bank. Now lumber is still not cheap by any means, but it's better than it was a few months ago. Now here in about a month and a half, we're going to have 30 broilers show up. 30 chickens make a big mess, and that way, when they're in the tractor, moving throughout the field, they're going to be fertilizing the pasture as they go. I've kind of drawn up my own set of plans. They're not great by any means, but if you're interested, I could probably try and put a link to them in the description. Let me show you what we're doing. Now the interior dimensions of my tractor are six feet wide by eight feet long. The bottom two by sixes are a little bit longer because where I've got them marked out here, those are where my wheels are gonna go. So I've got to have a little bit more room in the front and in the back, but we want to be able to move this thing around. It is gonna be heavy, but we do want to be able to move it around by hand without hooking it up to any kind of equipment. I've kind of gone through here already, marked out where some of my boards are gonna go, trying to give myself a head start. I've got just about every board cut that I need to put the main frame of this tractor together. I decided that for the door and around the door opening, I'm going to use lap joints to assemble that. It's going to keep everything a little more slim than if I tried to stack all this stuff, so I think that's a good option. The way that I'm going to cut those lap joints is to use a circular saw to remove half the thickness of each of these 2 before's. Of course, the 2 before is an inch and a half thick, so I'm going to be removing 3 quarters of an inch of material on both sides of that, and then I'll use a chisel to clean that up. We'll assemble it with screws. I don't think glue is necessary. If I need to, what I'll do is I'll go back after the fact and use maybe like a half inch piece of plywood or something as a gusset to help reinforce that joint but just the lap joint and the screws should be good enough for the way this is gonna you know for the function this is gonna serve You might as well tell the camera what you think of it. What do you think of it? It's looking good. You think it's going to hold the chickens? I hope so. It's going to contain them? I think now, so. you said a minute ago, like, wow, we actually, we're doing it. We're actually doing it. Is We've that... been talking about meat chickens since we moved, almost since we moved here and started raising some more, uh, raising the cow and just never found the time or the money for materials. And now the chickens are ordered. Yep, they're we didn't ordered. Have a choice. Chickens are bought and, uh, 
it's looking, I don't know, I'm really happy with how it's coming together. Still got a lot of work to do and a uh, little bit of daylight today and tomorrow afternoon to get it done if we're gonna get it done this weekend. I've got the pattern for my roof joist cut here. And if you're ever going to cut something more than once, don't bother messing with that thing over and over and over, trying to get it measured up. Just make it once. It's easier to do with two hands. That way. Nothing gets messed up. showed you how on the door we use lap joints at the corners to make everything look kind of nice and pretty, pretty-ish. We did go ahead and reinforce that with plywood, use a combination of screws and nails to make those as strong as possible. So now we have a good, strong, square door that's not going to sag over time, not going to fall apart because the door is going to be obviously the most heavily worked piece of this thing. We want it to be nice and strong and I think we've got that accomplished. Deacon's helping. There's no metal on it yet, so it's obviously uh, a lot lighter right now. The door's not on it than it's going to be whenever it's fully loaded. But I can move it. That's a start. Better than uh, the alternative. Hi, my name's Team Fan G W P Homestead, and we'll go some babe. We'll go some land hens soon, and I hope you guys get to see them. I hope, I hope we make a video of them, and hope you guys really get to see them. Make sure you keep watching and keep. Make sure you keep watching. You don't have to try to kill it, all right? Just nice. Nice strokes like that, okay? Thank you. Good. Hey, thank you. Are we done? With that one? Hey, nice job. Don't hit me with that hammer. <laughs>
Well, I should have known better than to think I could get a weekend project done in one weekend, but that's okay. Here we are. Gave me some time to think, and you saw me messing around with that angle grinder there, and I just wasn't really happy with the results I was getting out of that. Kind of leaving some jagged edges, and since my kids are going to be around here, I didn't, I didn't love that. Now, with practice, that'll get better. Uh, with a flat disc, you know, from the grinder or whatever, you can, you can, you can hide and cover up a lot of deficiencies. But what I decided to do was to get an impact attachment, uh, metal shear attachment for my impact drill, impact driver, whatever. It's still going to take some practice with that and getting good at it because I'm still kind of not great. But this is more designed to cut this sheet metal than a flat disc is. And like, you know, flat disc can work. You can, you can do a lot with that. But I felt like with this and some of the other projects I've got to do this was a good investment I can go ahead and get practice with this thing and that'll you know it'll pay off in the long run at least that's my hope and I forgot to mention since we're on the second weekend of this JR came up hello appreciate it buddy So we've been using these screws. I think that's a one inch screw. We've had them left over forever. And I did go ahead and buy a new box. These are inch and a half. Look at the difference between that. I mean, that is, that is stout. So we're gonna use these along the edges of the roof here and along the ridge cap that we're gonna have up top. Anywhere where we need a little more bite than these little one inches. These things, woo -wee. That's nice. I uh I made some scaffolding. One of the problems with using this old metal is it's rusted through in a few places and of course it's full of nail holes and screw holes from the last time it was put up somewhere. I tried using a, uh, it's a, like a roof sealant, it's basically tar and a little caulk tube. Uh, that stuff's sticky and I'm not really sure it was what I needed to use. I just wanted something black and something that would try to seal some of that up, keep you know more of the water off whatever critters in here. Uh, and I just, and I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna work out. I'm kinda, I'm happier with it now uh even got my hands kind of clean i'm happier with it now than i was when i like was doing it and it's kind of tacked up a little bit and i was rubbing it in i think it's going to work out okay but i don't know if i would recommend doing that i felt like i needed to do something not sure that was the right solution so if you have a better idea drop it down below i'm just out here doing my best I'm trying to get like a three eighths of an inch gap.
Me and JR. Gonna help, help me hold, get a hold of it, okay? Come help now, come help now. Ready? Push it up. One thing you need to know about these kind of latches, for one, this one isn't gonna wanna stay latched very well. For some reason, our door, I said for some reason, it's because all this lumber that you can buy nowadays is just really, really, really gnarly uh, and twisted and just gross. The, the, board, the door's kind of like cupping out a little bit, so this doesn't want to shut very well. If you do use this kind of latch and the door does shut behind you, you need to make sure you have a wire or a string or something going through the door frame so you can open this thing. Basically, you can pull that latch up from the inside. Ask me how I know that's necessary. All right, moment of truth here. We had some rope and conduit. I uh, feel like the conduit would make a nice little handle. So had that stuff laying around, we're gonna repurpose it. I know this thing is heavy. I only need it to move eight feet at a time, but I know this thing's heavy. So without further ado. Not kind of that's the only draw one. Hey, it'll get after you if you're not careful. Right. So, <laughs> as expected, that's very heavy. I think I may have built a coop that only I can move, and it may not be much of a tractor. It's probably more like a tank. JR giggled holding the camera. Chicken tank. <laughs> not a chicken tractor, it's a chicken tank. Still good for rotational graving, uh, grazing gravy. Rotational gravy. Gravy. I'm tired. This has been a long day, a long couple, uh, no, even with a break in between. It's been a headache. But I'm happy with what we've come up with. This is a pretty cool, pretty cool little thing. I love how our chicken tractor came together, and I'm really excited to get our meat birds and get them in it and see how they do in it. As we were building this tractor, we realized pretty quickly that it was going to be a hefty thing. And I really like that because with it now being so hefty, I feel like it can serve multiple purposes on our farm. If I need some baby goats in it to be separate from mom, I can throw them in here and put them wherever I want to. If they're bottle babies and they need to be by the house, they can be up here by the house. If I want them in the field still, I can put them in the field. We could also possibly prop the door open and leave it in the field as just a regular goat shelter. This was just the first step in preparing for meat birds. So be sure to subscribe so you can see how else we're preparing for our meat chickens as well as once we get them, how our journey goes from arrival to butcher. Well, that's all I got for y'all today, guys. I'm Megan, this is the GWP Homestead, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.